This video is brought to you by Nebula. Today, Israel surrounds Gaza City. Musk launches a new AI chatbot, and Prime Minister Albanese meets President Xi. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Monday the 6th of November 2023. This morning, it was reported that as part of their ground invasion, Israeli forces had surrounded Gaza City and had cut off the northern part of Gaza. As part of this escalation in the war, ground troops are expected to enter the encircled city at some point today or tomorrow. If these reports prove to be correct, then casualties will rise on both sides. As things stand, around 1.5 million Palestinians have fled their homes since the conflict began, which equates to about 70% of the population, and around 9,700 have sadly lost their lives, according to Gaza's health ministry. Speaking about this situation, an Israeli spokesperson confirmed that the military had successfully encircled Gaza City, and that, because of this, a ceasefire is not on the table at all. For their part, it looks as though Hamas will be fighting the Israeli ground forces on their own. Prior to the encirclement, the US moved an Ohio-class submarine into the region, and indicated that it would intervene militarily if Iran and Hezbollah attacked Israel. While Israeli troops are still holding off on pushing into Gaza City, the US is still pursuing its attempts to secure a humanitarian pause. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has, today, arrived in Turkey for talks with Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan. Erdogan's decision not to meet Blinken personally could be perceived as a snub. Despite this, though, Erdogan seems to understand the role that he's expected to play in the conflict, saying on Sunday evening that it was Turkey's duty as a supporter of Palestine to stop the violence. Back in Israel, though, it seems that Netanyahu is trying to control his ministers. On Sunday, a junior member of his cabinet suggested that Israel could carry out a nuclear strike against Gaza. Heritage Minister Amihei Eliyahu, who himself is a member of a far-right party in the coalition, answered a question about a hypothetical nuclear option by saying, that's one way. He's been suspended from cabinet meetings until further notice. In an attempt to limit the damage from this statement, Netanyahu's office said Eliyahu's statements are not based in reality. Israel and the IDF are operating in accordance with the highest standards of international law to avoid harming innocents. We will continue to do so until our victory. The League of Arab States took more from Eliyahu's statements, though, saying that the racist statements of Israeli minister Eliyahu are revealing. Not only does he admit that they possess a nuclear weapon, but he also confirms the reality of the Israelis' abhorrent racist view towards the Palestinian people. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Research published by Bloomberg on Monday found that the UK economy is most likely already in recession. According to Bloomberg, the UK could expect to see a 0.1% quarter-on-quarter contraction in the third quarter of 2023, followed by a 0.2% contraction in the fourth quarter, which would meet the technical definition of a recession. This is slightly more pessimistic than the Bank of England's forecasts, but Bloomberg data suggests that soaring interest rates and rising unemployment have reduced consumer demand more than expected in recent months. If this analysis is correct, it will be a real headache for Rishi Sunak, who staked his premiership on economic competence. One of Sunak's five priorities announced during his first few days in number 10 was literally to grow the economy, and if he's seen incapable of meeting even this undeniably low bar, his re-election prospects will decrease yet further. In some AI news this morning, it's been reported that Twitter CEO Elon Musk is in the process of launching a new chatbot called Grok. The chatbot is currently only available to a handful of users on his social media site, but it's expected to roll out more widely. The chatbot is different to many others in a few key ways. Firstly, Musk claims that it loves sarcasm and would sometimes answer questions with a little humour. Second, according to Musk, Grok will answer spicy questions that are rejected by most other AI systems. For example, when Grok was asked for a step-by-step guide to make cocaine, it responded with, just a moment while I pull up the recipe, because I'm totally going to help you with that. It then listed generalised rather than usable information, combined with a sarcastic suggestion before warning against pursuing the idea. 
Musk also said that one of the ways that Grok is different from other AI systems is that it has access to up-to-date information from Twitter. He also confirmed that it will be built into the X app soon, while also being available as a standalone app. Moving to China now, where Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is set to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing. Albanese will become the first Australian Prime Minister to meet with the Chinese leader since 2016, in what's seen as a key moment in a warming up of the relationship between the two countries. In the meeting, it's expected that Albanese will ask for the removal of Chinese tariffs on Australian goods, whereas President Xi is expected to ask for more access to Australian sectors. Speaking about the meeting, and in an attempt to warm others up to the idea of the meeting, Albanese has said that his past engagements with Xi had been positive and constructive. There are sticking points in the meeting, though, with Australian writer Yang Henjun still imprisoned in China. He's been in prison since 2019 on espionage charges, and his health is said to be deteriorating. Albanese is facing pressure at home to secure his release. In summarising the upcoming visit, Albanese pointed out that What I've said is that we need to cooperate with China where we can, disagree where we must, and engage in our national interest. We recognise as well that we come with different political systems, very different values arising from that and different histories. But we deal with each other on face value. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss dog vaccinations. The Kingdom of Bhutan has recently become the first country in the world to declare that its entire street dog population is fully vaccinated, after years of work with the charity Humane Society International. Since its inception, the programme has vaccinated more than 150,000 street dogs and microchipped more than 23,000 pet dogs. Speaking at a ceremony, the Bhutanese Prime Minister presented the charity with a plaque for their consistent and unwavering support towards Bhutan's street dog welfare. That's unfortunately all we have time for on YouTube today, but if you enjoyed this video and want to support us in making more of this kind of content, then you should check out Nebula. That's the creator-built and creator-owned streaming service where you can watch all of our videos and podcasts across our channels, totally ad-free. Plus, we post some of our videos on there early, and there's a bunch of exclusive content already there waiting for you on the platform. Now, if that wasn't enticing enough, Nebula is also full of incredible content from other creators you know and love, like Johnny Harris, Real Life Law, and Legal Eagle, as well as lots of cool creators you haven't even discovered yet. And the best thing is that this can all be yours for the price of just $2.50 per month. So check it out by clicking the link in the description and make sure you use our link so they know you came from us, which will help us produce more content in the future.